Hey everyone, this is Neil once again from the Overclocker magazine and today I have for you the Aorus RGB DDR4 4400 memory kit. So this time, unlike the previous kit that I did which was the 3733 kit, this 4400 version uses Hynix DJR memory. And you know this simply by looking at the timings. So the timings here are 19, 26, 26, 46 at 1.5 volts for the chosen frequency of course. And talking about pricing, you're looking at around 3,000 Rand to 3,500 Rand. I don't know how much it is in US dollars, but basically that's the price range you're looking at. And even if you do find it at 3,500, you're not gonna be able to find a cheaper DRAM kit for the same frequency or higher frequency. So more than just being cheap, what does that do for you? Well, it allows you to do some seriously high overclocking. In fact, on a motherboard, not the board that I chose to review this, uh, memory kit on but on another motherboard a 14 board even I was able to do or validate rather DDR4 5600 and on the Aorus Tachyon this particular motherboard which unfortunately we don't get locally the two dim board made for overclocking I was able to stabilize 5066 actually you can use that 24 7 so 5066 works but at 1.62 volts so just be aware of that which is still fine for that sort of frequency that's more than fine However, there's a difference with the chosen motherboard for this review, for this DRAM review. So I didn't know prior to receiving the motherboard that on Z590 and particularly this generation with 11th gen core CPUs, the lowest frequency validation for DRAM, for DRAM on the Z590 series is actually the mini ITX board. The two DIMM boards were always guaranteed to give you either the highest memory uh, DRAM validation or at least the same as what you would get on the high-end boards, the most premium motherboards. So on this particular motherboard, I didn't know that it was only rated for 4600. I had assumed that since Z590 and 11th Gen Core lend themselves so well to DRAM overclocking that easily I could do, or at least at the very minimum, I could do 4800, but that wasn't the case. So that got me thinking, what happens if you're in a situation where you already have the motherboard, you have capable DRAM, but overclocking isn't an option for you. Just like what happened to me with the Z590i or Ross Ultra. On this particular board, it was rather difficult to try and stabilize 46, 48 or 5066. Yes, I can show you screenshots. I can even show you a video, which you're seeing right now of the memory doing 5066, but then it goes on to fail super high. And regardless of what I had to do or with the timings on the voltage, I just couldn't get it to be stable. When I did eventually get it to be stable, the timings were so relaxed and the frequency and the voltage rather so high that it's actually not worth it. And the same held true for 4800 and as well for 4600. So I ended up settling for 4400. So essentially I went from 19, 26, 26, 46, which is the rated XMP timings to 19, 25, 25, 32 or 39, I'm not sure. And for that, I was able to make some significant strides in terms of performance uh, with the tuning and particularly in synthetic tests and in some games as well. I tried to go, or rather I did manage to run 17, 23, 23, 32, but I needed 1.6 volts for that. And even though I did manage to significantly lower the primary timings, I found that performance didn't improve as much as I thought it would. For instance, in the Geekbench 3 uh, memory test, I went from 9,300 or rather 9,400 all the way to 9,600 or just under. For 100 millivolts more and primary timings being so much tighter, that, that's really not a lot to gain. And quite frankly, I don't think it's worth it. So if I were you in this situation, I would definitely just stick with the 4400. So in this entire process, I actually realized that I tend to use a board that's particularly designed for high speed memory or is lends itself well to that. But that is usually not the situation most people find themselves in. Most of us buy four dim boards rather than the two dim boards. And if you're dealing with a four dim board, it's it can be a very different experience to what somebody else gets with a, a board that's necessarily tuned for overclocking. So I think this is more representative of what you are going to come across more times than you're gonna find yourself being able to do DDR5066 from this kit. Not that it's not capable of doing it, but if you are dealing with a motherboard that has particular properties or I wouldn't say limitations, but it's validated for only 
4600 like the Z590i Oros Ultra then your only options are to tune and which is exactly what I did and it's still worthwhile because you get a lot for that and if you are tuning you can also save yourself from the grief of just having to deal with memory testing because memory testing takes a hell of a long time it takes a really 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 long time to do and if you are only having to test at one frequency then you can just start by dialing in your free, uh, your sub timings and yeah take it from there it makes the whole thing a lot quicker to do Yes, 19, 25, 25, 32 doesn't give you the whole picture because you might be thinking that's not much from the default primary timings, but I'm telling you all the performance is in the sub timings. That's where you want to be because you will get massive, massive performance gains by just tuning those. And to top it all off, as I said, you only need 20 millivolts more. And if you might not even need the 20 millivolts more if you just stick to the 19, 26, 26, 46 that the kit is rated at. In your gaming test, of course, as usual, it depends on the games. The games that are very CPU bound, you will see some performance gains from tuning. But overall, tuning here at 4400 still won't hurt you. Whether you can appreciate it visually, particularly in your games or not, is a different thing. But there definitely is performance to be had if you can tune memory and the advantage of not having to use any more voltage than you otherwise would. Okay, so one of the things that's true about this board when it comes to DRAM overclocking or tuning rather, because we're not talking overclocking now, coming we're talking tuning, that if you want to be able to set these two settings, TWRRDSG, same same gang essentially twrrd different gang there are some settings that you have to leave on auto and let the board deal with them and it, and it's these two twtrs and twtrl if you attempt to set these manually which you can what happens is that it overrides these two settings for you so you have to decide either or and since this gives you the best performance and that those two are, don't really do much for you i would recommend leaving them on auto and just setting these as tight or as tight as possible and obviously as stable as possible but outside of that there isn't much else to tune you know uh, the rest of the stuff is typical stuff that's true for all djr memory i mean we all know twr can go pretty low this tcwl can be any number of ticks lower than your cas latency and that's, I think the motherboard generally determines this. I used to think it was the DRAM specifically, but no, it's generally motherboard related. And then you obviously have your typical settings. They don't get much tighter than this, actually. TRFC, if it's too low, what you notice is that uh, your, your IDA64 memory bandwidth test, you might get 0, 0, 0, 0 megabytes a second. You know, So just check, check that this is not too tight. TRTP is usually eight to so six works as well. T4 won't go any lower. So these are the usual, the usual stuff. TCKE, I usually use six. Sometimes I would set four. I haven't seen a huge performance gain or any meaningful performance gain for me using TCKE or four, but I just set it at four because it can and the system is stable like that. And that's pretty much it. The other settings, as I said, are pretty much standard. These will not go any lower than 7.7. 7. This one isn't actually relevant because it's a different rank and I'm using single rank memory. But this, uh, different DIM, this is quite important. This 7 is the lowest you can get it. I tried 6. Uh, the performance actually got worse, believe it or not. So there's nothing to tune here. 7.4.6.6. So that's pretty much it. So with these settings... Uh, outside of dialing in your primary timings, you should be good to get the performance that I just showed you with the tuned 4400 setting. Short of that, or if you want to do any other sort of uh, tuning, further tuning from this, I think it will be because you have better DJR than what's available on this memory. And obviously, you'll go down uh, accordingly. But for secondary timings and tertiary timings, I don't think it gets much better. As far as DDR4 4400 goes, this is definitely the cheapest kit that you can buy and it does have the legs to go far. And with that said, remember to share, like, subscribe guys and I'll see you guys on the flip side. So take care and peace. Yeah.